Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our service at Madison Avenue Baptist Church. We are so glad to see all y'all here. And welcome to our live stream audience coming in from literally all over the world. We want y'all to know that wherever you're coming in from, you're as much part of this family as all of us sitting right here. Um, it is Madison Avenue Baptist Church, but I feel like it's kind of Madison Avenue Baptist Church and Central Baptist Church today. <laughs> Uh, I want to welcome our friends from Noonan, Georgia, Central Baptist Church back here and kind of throughout the congregation today. They are friends of mine. I preached down there years ago, and they wrote me and said part of their group is going to be singing at Carnegie Hall this weekend, and so they want to come worship with us today. So can we please give them a big warm welcome? <laughs> We're so glad y'all are here. Welcome. Welcome. Um, Jackie, do you want to give, I'm sorry, you, she just dropped all the papers on the floor and I'm like, can you come up? Um, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Um, so in three weeks from yesterday on uh, May 4th, which is Star Wars Day, by the way, um, we will be celebrating um, with our friends at the Harlem Gar Garden uh, to clean up and plant and paint and beautify the neighborhood. So if anybody would like to join us, it's roughly from 9 to 12, and then we go out for a lovely brunch afterwards. Please see me at coffee hour. And for our live stream audience, since we know you can't be with us, if there's anything in your neighborhood, any area that you can go and beautify, we would love to encourage you to do it and that day and to please send pictures to us so we can post them. Thank you. We have just a few other announcements I want to share. Um, first, uh, next week, I'm actually going to be guest preaching down in Georgia. <laughs> so we're just going to switch places. But I was invited by uh, Smoke Rise Baptist, which is outside of Atlanta, to preach and give a keynote. And so we have Dr. Patricia Hagler, who's the associate pastor of Antioch Baptist Church in Corona, Queens, going to be with us next Sunday. Um, and I know some of you are like, aren't you just getting ready to take a sabbatical? Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, but this invitation actually came up two years ago before the sabbatical even got on the horizon. So I'm excited to go and be with them. And you, have, you will be in good hands next Next week uh, with Jackie leading the service and with uh, Dr. Hagler. Last but not least, let's talk about what's happening today. We have two very exciting things besides our service. One, a little kind of surprise for one of our folks, but um, we have somebody who's just about ready to have a baby with us today, our soprano Jenny Lindsay, who's with us. And um, yes, yay. So congratulations to Jenny and her husband, Eric, and Johnny and Josie. And so we have a thanks to Jackie, who is the chair of our uh, Board of Hospitality. We have a special coffee hour today in honor of you and your growing family and a little cake. So everybody go back there and share in the sugar and caffeine and help celebrate with Jenny, because this is very exciting. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> yep. Um, and last but not least, after the service today at 2.30, thanks to Oz's partnering with some wonderful groups here in New York, we have a concert, a cello concert, with 30 different cello students from the Lincoln Center Kaufman Center here in the sanctuary, and it's through cello teacher Nicole Johnson, who's on the faculty there. These students range in age from like five, I was going to say two months, but probably that's too small. <laughs> For a cello. <laughs> so five all the way up to older. And um, it's just going to be exciting to be able to share in that energy and their talents here in this wonderful space. So anybody that's interested, you're most welcome. It's at 2.30 today. Any other announcements before we get started? Great. Well, in the back on the right, as you go out, we have a beautiful children's church run by our own precious Gordon. So anybody that's brought children today or feels like a child today, you are most welcome as we pass the peace to join them back there. And as we pass the peace, we always start with our live stream audience coming in from this camera. So we say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. You are welcome in this place. Please let us pass the peace of Christ together.
Here are words for the call to worship, which comes from Psalm 8. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Won't you join us in our first hymn this morning, number 459, Lord, you give the great commission, and I invite you to stand as we sing. Yeah. 
please.
For our prayer this morning, we traditionally at Madison start with a time of personal prayer. Whatever is on your heart and mind, it is welcome in this time. You can raise it up silently or you are welcome to raise it up out loud. And then I'm going to invite us into a community prayer. It's actually found in your hymnal. It's on page 451. For If you're coming in live stream, I'm going to invite you to actually relax, take a break, close your eyes, and just listen to the words. Sometimes that's just nice to do too, right? So in the community prayer, I invite you to join me here and on site in the bold-faced sections, and then we will say the Lord's Prayer together, and that's in your bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come here today, as always, and we give thanks We give thanks for each other. We give thanks for the sound of life and children and music. We give thanks for this beautiful weather. We give thanks for the fact that we were able to be here. And we praise you. There's so many things we come here with this morning. And we pause so that we might raise these individual prayers to you. Prayers of blessings for our friends from Central Baptist Church in their journey and in their music. Prayers also for the heightening tension and violence between Iran and Israel and Gaza. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers this morning, and we join our voices together in a community prayer of a litany of ministry. O God, who sent Jesus into the world, not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life to set others free, shape us for your ministry. Claim us, O God, for your service, and direct us toward your will. You have graced all members of Christ's body, one by one, with gifts of the Spirit to fulfill their vocation, to lead lives worthy of your calling, to be workers who have no reason to be ashamed, to shine as lights to your glory. You have granted each of us the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You give grace according to the measure of Christ's gift, And some are to be called apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Grant that together we may all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of your Son to the full stature of Christ. Through your grace, O God, may we lead a life worthy of the vocation to which you call us. Claim us, O God, for your service and direct us toward your will. And we raise this prayer and all of our prayers to you through the words taught to us by your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Please join us in our next hymn this morning, number 331, Sign of a God in Majestic Divinity. And please stand as we sing. have a one-line scripture today, which means you're just going to get to brunch even faster. It is Luke chapter 5, verse 16. But Jesus would withdraw to deserted places and pray. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'll I'll admit it. I mean, we're all family here, so I feel like I feel comfortable that I could admit this. Um, I have extravagant tastes in travel. I just love to visit beautiful, exotic, like faraway places, which is why, my friends, I traveled two weeks ago to the beautiful place of Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> now, anybody here from Dayton? Am I going to get a tomato? Oh, Jenny! <laughs> And we're giving you a shower on top of that. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me just say to Jenny and all folks coming in, maybe live stream, who from Dayton are offended, let me just say this. I personally have no room to talk myself. Okay, just for your information, my, dad, my dad's family actually is from Gaffney, South Carolina. If anybody knows about Gaffney, South Carolina, it's the home of the giant peach water tank which when it was built looked way, way, way too much like a giant person mooning all the traffic on <laughs> Interstate 85, right? So the city council, the city council voted to allocate funds to put a leaf on it to clarify. <laughs> so bottom line, I have no grounds to judge Jenny and our friends from Dayton, okay? Just so that's clear. But there it is, I go to Dayton, Ohio, for this really very cool writers' conference, and I had a bit of time beforehand, so I decided to visit the Wright Brothers Museum. Now, maybe some of you know the Wright Brothers actually grew up in Dayton, Ohio, 
And the museum was built around their old bicycle shop, which is where they did their early flight designs and calculations and thinking. And I was especially interested, because I'm from North Carolina, which Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, which y'all probably know is the place where the Wright brothers first flew. So I go in, I'm the only person in the little museum, the docent's so excited, he gives me a tour, gives me the whole story about everything, and it was great until he got to the end of his pitch when he gestured around the shop and said in this kind of grand voice, so you are looking at the birthplace of flight. There was a long, long silence in which my rational side said in my head, walk away, walk away, honey, just walk away. But my lesser annoying self was like, do it, do it, do it, do it. And so I smiled and said in my best Southern accent, that is so interesting. Because, you know, I grew up near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, where they actually flew the plane. All right, so I grew up in Charlotte, that's 250 miles west, so what, it's the same state, it's close, okay? Um, but after my Kitty Hawk announcement, the docent said, yeah, but they thought it up here. To which I replied in a rather condescending tone, well, yeah, but we all know that thinking about it ain't doing it. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Was that rude? Yes. Was it contrary to many, many sermons I have preached about being kind and not responding in anger or impatience? Yes, but it was so fun. And okay, yes, I'll, I'll work on following my own sermon advice, right? But my tacky comment did give birth to our sermon today, which is entitled, Thinking About It Ain't Doing It, which is about the fine line between thinking about something and doing something. It's actually a quite delicate balance between the two because if you think about it, both Dayton and Kitty Hawk were critical to the Wright brothers' success. Without time to think and reflect and create, the Wright brothers would never have gotten off the ground in Kitty Hawk. But without Kitty Hawk, the Wright brothers would have been stuck in the bicycle shop forever. Now, I think it's the same in life. You know, we all kind of face that precarious balance between thinking about something and doing something, between reflection and risk. And you know who struck that balance best, I think? Jesus. Now, that's why I chose our one-sentence scripture today. Luke 5, 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus' entire life was one long pattern of reflection, then risk. Thinking and praying, then doing. I mean, think about this, Matthew 14, 23, Jesus pulls away to pray before he walks on the Sea of Galilee. Mark 3, 7. Jesus pulls away to be by himself on a boat before he heals. Matthew 26, 36, Jesus prays all night long in the garden before he has to face his betrayers. And my personal favorite is Luke 6, 12, when Jesus prays all night long and then goes out and picks the 12 disciples and preaches the Sermon on the Mount. Big day. The Beatitudes, those beautiful, beautiful words, blessed are the poor for yours is the kingdom of heaven. This is what prayer and reflection manifested. Jesus was fueled, he was empowered, he was emboldened, he was sanctified by his time of reflection and prayer. But while this time was critical to his call, Jesus knew that time of reflection was not itself his call. Jesus' call was not in the bike shop, but it was back out into the world to make manifest the vision that God had given him. Now, friends, this is the exact same formula that we need to use as well. Every day, we have got to take time away 
from our cell phones and our iPads and our i whatevers fill in the blank, our electronic chains that kind of hold us to the world and ref reflect and pray and think and create. That right there is critical to our well-being, to our emotional grounding. It's critical to keeping us connected to God's call for us. That said, at some point, we've got to leave the bike shop. Now, we can't afford to get stuck there, and it's easy to do so. Let me give you uh, some red flags to watch for. When you hear yourself saying things like, ooh, I've been meaning to do thus and such, or I've always wanted to do thus and such, or one day I'm gonna do thus and such, friends, you are stuck. Now here's the big bring it home, one line summary of my sermon, okay? Everybody come back to me, come back. Here it is, ready? At some point, we have to break free of the bike shop and fly. Now, the remainder of my sermon will be a flight lesson. A short flight lesson, but a flight lesson nonetheless. And there's only two rules in this type of flight that we need to follow. Number one, we fly only on God's time. And number two, when God calls, we go. So lesson number one, we fly only on God's time. Now sometimes, sometimes, God needs us to stay in the bike shop just a little longer. Things aren't quite ready. The timing may be not just right for us to step out and manifest that vision that we're carrying. Let me offer a little pop culture illustration. This is a long shot, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and hope that maybe some folk here have heard the name Beyonce. <laughs> And that some of y'all may have also heard that she just dropped a new country album called Cowboy Carter. Now there's an interesting backstory to this album. Cowboy Carter was supposed to be released in 2022, but then COVID hit. And Beyonce decided to put out another album called Renaissance instead. And here's her words about her decision. She said, Cowboy Carter took over five years to create, and it's been great to have the grace to be able to take the time with it. I was initially going to put Cowboy Carter out first, but with the pandemic, there was just too much heaviness. There was too much heaviness in the world. People wanted to dance. People deserved to dance. And so I had to trust in God's timing. Friends, God is the air traffic controller that sees all things on the earthly runway. God is the only one who knows what things should happen when for the best of all. So rule number one, we fly only on God's time. And rule number two, when God calls, we go. Last Tuesday was the 79th anniversary of the death of the theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And as many of you know, Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor in Germany during World War II who led a great resistance against Hitler and the Nazis. It was a time of suffering and violence and genocide. It was also a time that God called for justice. And yet, there are a lot of folks, Christians included, that stayed in their emotional and spiritual bike shops during that horrible time. They did a lot of thinking about justice. They did a lot of studying the horrors of war. They did a lot of talking about how awful things were, but they never left the safe walls of their bike shop. But Bonhoeffer did. He broke free of those walls. He acted on what he believed. He preached, he spoke, he wrote about these injustices. He made his convictions fly. And on April 9th, 1945, he lost his life for what he did. Yet he never wavered from that path. 
As Bonhoeffer said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Where in your life are you stuck? In what bike shop are you hiding? What would happen if you broke free and made your dreams fly? Friends, we've all been given a great gift, every single one of us, and that is the gift of opportunity. The opportunity to find and live into our call, and believe me, hear me when I say we all have a call. We have an opportunity to find and live into that call. We have an opportunity to make things better. We have an opportunity to stand up for what we believe. We have an opportunity to make our convictions fly. Can it be dangerous? Sure. Is there risk involved? Always. The Wright brothers crashed. Bonhoeffer was martyred. But that's not the end of the story. The legacy of what they did flies far beyond the simple parameters of a human life. For as the poet Walt Whitman said, the powerful play goes on and you, you may contribute a verse. So your homework this week, spend a little time in the bike shop. Spend a little time thinking about your life. Spend a little time pondering your hopes and dreams, praying with God about what your call is and when you should follow it. But don't stay there too long because the walls of that shop can close in fast. Remember, thinking about it ain't doing it. Because we all, at some point, have to break free and fly. And the people said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Aza. We now come to our time of gifts and offerings. And as the ushers come forward, I invite you who are in the pews today and anybody coming in online to consider giving to the ministries of this church. If you're coming in live stream, there's ways to give via our website or our app. But this is about being part of our family, about supporting the voice of this church, and about taking the ministries of our church as far out as we can. So please, will the ushers come forward? stand.
please remain standing for our last hymn this morning, number 330, Hallelujah, Hear God's Story. so glad that you came to be with us in worship today. I want to offer a special blessing for our friends from Central Baptist in your travels as you are here and in your beautiful music that I'm sure you will share later, uh, later this weekend. Please remember that this is a community of faith in which you will always be welcome and you will always be considered family. And until we see you again, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. Amen.